G'day everyone. Bet you didn't think you'd ever see another Advent Calendar of Circuits from me, but I thought this year it'd be fun to do it again. So let's kick it off with something really straightforward, extra simple, but actually very useful and potentially could save your life. So I've been doing some pulse power experiments lately with high voltage capacitors, um, and also, you know, perhaps other experiments over the years, I probably should have had one of these rather than just shorting capacitors with a resistor or a screwdriver and melting the screwdriver across the terminals. But I finally got around to building sort of a dumb discharge tool. It's extremely simple, we can see here it's just a resistor that's suitably rated. I made it out of a, a bunch of different resistors, I'll show you the, the full device here in a minute. Um, and you know, that, that drops the majority of the voltage, then we've got a bridge to make it polarity insensitive, so no matter which way you connect it, the um, device which glows in LED in this case is a, you know, a polarity sensitive device, so we have the bridge to make sure that um, you know the voltage across here is always going to be positive here. Then we have a Zener diode that drops a constant voltage as long as the, the voltage across there is you know exceeding the, the breakdown voltage of the Zener. This is essentially a shunt regulator. It provides 4.7 volts to this LED that has then you know, got a dropping resistor, so the LED current is at most about 3 milliamps regardless of the voltage of the capacitor as it discharges. The uh, the surge current that these diodes have to stand is about about 2 amps maximum if you use this at 20 kilovolts, which I'm not sure I would use this particular tool the way I built it at 20 kilovolts, but um, you know you just have to have suitably rated diodes. Fortunately, that, you know, that current is not there for very long, so they don't really need to be particularly highly rated. This Zener is only a 5 watt Zener. Um, the pulse power is fairly high, but the, the actual CW power is quite low. Uh, in terms of construction, you can see here, I've put it inside an acrylic tube. I've got 10 1K resistors that are um, high current devices. I actually tested each of these and they, they did not break down even at 2 or 3 kilovolts. Um, I guess you, if you really wanted to be 100% sure, you could pot this device or, or fill it with oil. Down here we have the LED and Zener and bridge resistor, and then on the other end we just have a cable going to a clamp that gets you know, hooked onto whatever you're planning on discharging. So this capacitor here, which I'll just demonstrate the unit with, is uh, it's a welder capacitor. It's you know, 40 microfarads, uh, 1.2 kilovolts, so not a particularly big capacitor. It's on the borderline of being able to kill you. I mean, getting across it would certainly be pretty unpleasant. It might not kill you, but you would not enjoy <laughs> the process, and if you did get it across your chest, you might might shock you into a bad rhythm. I'm just going to use my voltage withstand tool here to charge it up. This will take a moment because this is only charging at about 2 or 3 milliamps. This entire system of discharging through is what is basically just a resistor with a fancy way to light up something to show you the discharge process. Is why I've called this the dumb capacitor discharge tool because it's it's really slow and as that voltage drops is the capacitor discharges then the current drops so while it might be you know two amps to begin with this time constant of this resistor plus the capacitor is going to set how long it takes to discharge so for tens of microfarads this is fine but for a larger capacitor like say this guy here um, you know you're talking a lot longer so it becomes less practical for large com capacitors, but for smaller ones like this, which are actually more likely, I think, the ones that will probably be in the kinds of things I'm doing at the moment, um, this is sufficient. But perhaps another video will talk about a better way to do this, in that you can scale to any voltage which can discharge at constant current, and that's an entirely different situation. Then you can discharge almost as fast as you design the components to their rate um, for the discharge current. Okay, so I can actually get this in the frame here. Yep, see, LED lights up for a little bit, dies away. You can see the voltage is dropping, and we're down to about 2 volts, which is... It'll continue to drop, but much slower now that the LED's forward voltage has essentially been reached, and the discharge current drops down to, you know, much below a milliamp. Once you're below about a volt anyway, you can just, you know, short the, the capacitor anyway. It's not really going to hurt anything at that point. Situation's a little different with higher voltages. Like, you know, if I charge this guy up to 2,000 volts, you can you can draw a little bit of an arc during the discharge. But at only an amp maximum, it's not exactly going to arc flash you or anything. It's pretty safe. Situation 
obviously gets worse as the capacitors get bigger. You start talking about this guy. This is 250 joule capacitor. I mean, getting across that would almost certainly kill you at five kilovolts because it could jump out and zap you. Whereas, I mean, six kilovolts and four microamps could mess you up too. But uh, it's with these, you know, a couple of hundred volt capacitors, you really do need to make direct contact to get zapped by these. And I mean, it happens. People have died, but it's a lot less likely to happen. Something like this, though, is where this resistor discharge becomes very impractical. This is a 7.3 kilojoule bank. Discharging this with that tool would take a very, very long time. It actually is kind of um, surprising, but they put 2.7 mega ohm resistors across each of these capacitors. Um, this is out of a piece of equipment. I think it's out of a, a piece of maybe beauty equipment. Uh, it might be, um, you know, an I, I, what do they call it? An intense light pulse, or maybe a laser. I'm not really sure, but it's. Uh, it's a pretty big capacitor bank, and yet the one tau of this RC would be like 2.7 weeks. So <laughs> this thing's going to stay deadly for a long time. You would think that they'd have some better discharge circuit than that, but uh, that's what they chose to go with. All right, this is simple for our, for our first day. We'll try to do some more exciting things. Um, I think perhaps this is a it is practical for smaller high voltage capacitors certainly for, for nanofarads up to a couple of microfarads it's even tens of, maybe even hundreds of microfarads it's fine you uh, you might want to actually build it as two resistor sticks instead of just one um, you know and, and all you would really have then is you have another resistor in, in this leg of the of the discharge device um, you can split the resistance between them or whatever and then uh, that might be a little bit more practical if you wanted to extend them and also you could put the uh, the light emitting device sort of you could actually put the light emitting device at the other end too if you really wanted to um, I didn't build it that way but in hindsight I probably should have built it that way because when you're holding the low potential end here you're kind of covering it up whereas having it at the tip would be actually make a lot more sense but uh, next version perhaps alrighty um, I'll see you tomorrow Bye.